there hey there. Go. This is Tracy Schmidt with the Schmidt team at Supreme Lending, and I am here with the amazing Heather Jones. Heather, Hi, how are you? Tracy. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so glad that you wanted to have this call to get some information out um, to your market and to buyers and, and sellers and, and kind of just educate people on what's going on in the market. So start out just by telling um, everybody a little bit about yourself and the market you work and some, some information. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for, yeah. for doing this call with me. So I'm Heather Jones um, from eXp Realty and um, Heather Jones Real Estate. I serve uh, Corona, California primarily, but really all of Riverside County, um, most of the Inland Empire. My, my primary focus is Corona. I live here. I work here. I play here. My kids go to school here. So um, Corona, Corona is home. And, um, but I really, I'll go wherever my clients take me, um, especially in the Inland Empire. That's my, uh, kind of bread and butter there. That's awesome. And everybody, I mean, as a mortgage lender, I don't really know the stats of inventory and houses in specific mm -hmm. markets. So uh, that's really a question that I get a lot is, you know, what, what does inventory look like? And I don't know for like your market, do you have any numbers that you can share of maybe home, the number of homes listed or anything like that? Yeah. So I was just looking earlier today, actually in Corona, uh, there are 204 homes on the market total. Okay. This is active homes or coming soon. Okay. And this includes single family residences, condos, and townhomes. Wow. Um, yeah. So numbers are increasing, actually. Inventory is increasing. There are houses. So that's a great thing. Yes. Yes. Um, and then in terms of price point in Corona price point, average price points have gone up. The median price point of a home here in Corona has increased over okay. the last couple of years. So there are only two homes available right now under $500,000. Okay. That's um, and if we kind of look at loan limits, uh, with, you know, the, conventional loan limits of 647 to 95, I believe it is. 47 too. You're so close. Yes, too. Uh, there are 46 uh, single family homes, condos, and townhomes that okay. are priced under 680, which when we do the math, 680 price point with a 5% down payment will yeah. get you right in the appropriate loan limits. Okay. So there's some inventory out there. So some inventory that's, that's and some more so obviously much. coming soon. Okay. So I just drilled you a little bit. So you asked me a question that you get from people about mortgages. Yeah. So, I mean, primarily right now, my biggest thing with people that I talk to the general public is what's happening with the market. It's going to crash. Yeah. We're approaching a recession. These prices are just too high to sustain. So yeah. can you kind of speak to that? Yeah. I mean, I actually met with a client today and, and they were saying the biggest mistake they made is they didn't buy last year. Right. And, and I really feel like these same people a year from now are going to say the biggest mistake I made is they didn't buy now. Um, mm -hmm. And so I was actually, um, I, I worked for countrywide home loans at the time in, in the 2007, 2008, I was a branch manager. I had 30 loan officers and it was the time of 500 credit scores, stated income, NEGAM loans, um, and the branch shut down and I had to lay off 30 people. Um, and it was like one of the hardest times, right? But, yeah. but the reason that that happened is because not only were the qualifications different then, but it was because they didn't have equity, right? So, so not only right now are people qualifying with high FICO scores, down payment, um, they have a ton of equity, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be able to foreclose on a home that has equity. Um, so, so I think we're just in a completely different time. Now, if you talk about inflation and things like that and, and things yeah. going on in the world and the economy and, and things still not being shipped because of COVID and th all of those things change, right? But as far as the housing market, um, they're still projecting appreciation and they're still projecting interest rates continuing to go up and we'll kind of look at some charts and stuff that I can share with you to share with people. But, um, I don't have a crystal ball. If I did, I'd be a bazillionaire in this. Right. <laughs> um, but you know, the people, the calls that we're on, um, it, it, it does not sound like there's any type of like bubble bursting or, um, I, I feel like it's the news and the media or I don't know. I don't know what, or maybe it's fear, you know, maybe people are just doubtful and fearful and not ready. And, and maybe that's 
the reasoning they're giving. I'm not sure, but yeah. Yeah. Well, so we are in, you know, middle of May yeah. of 2022 and interest rates are clearly higher than they were this time last yes. year. And a lot of things that I hear from buyers is that prices are too high and now interest rates are too high, but we are foreseeing interest rates could potentially increase even more. Right. So yes. you don't necessarily want to wait. You do not want to wait. And I'm going to show you a quick, um, I'm going to share my screen really quick so people can kind of get an idea of what, um, as, of what the market's been, right? So especially, okay. you know, if you're a first time home buyer and, and you don't know the history of interest rates. So this is um, the average 30 year fixed uh, mortgage rate over the past 39 years, right? Okay. So you could see just if you go down at the bottom of the screen here from 1982, right? 16%. So I started doing mortgages in 1997. So yeah, we were at like, I mean, I sold loans at like 16% with 10 points back in the day. Um, it was crazy, <laughs> but you could see like they've been high, right? I mean, in, in the last two years was an anomaly directly because of COVID. And yeah. so, um, but you could see here, like where we're hitting 4% for the first time was in 2012, right? And then it's kind of stayed steady. Um, and, and just right now you can see the difference uh, here you know, from, and this is kind of fun. Like you can kind of see that, that the year that you were born and what rates were then. So, um, mm -hmm. when I was born, it was 9%. Um, you were born, it was what? It was in the tens. Okay. So <laughs> if you're not giving your specific year, I love that. Uh, but, so 10%, but you, you guys could just see, you know, it's the average 30 year fixed rate. I mean, people were still buying homes in 1981. At yeah. You know, I feel like looking at this chart, our, our generation is spoiled with, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to look really in 1991 is when it kind of started to dip down. Right. But mm -hmm. you know, people were still taking cash out for home improvements. They were still consolidating debt. I mean, interest rates on credit cards are 22% and people don't have a problem racking up 20, 30 no grand. Problem. Yeah. Right? They just, and, and, a, yeah and a mortgage where you could get a tax deduction on the interest and build wealth and build equity if it hits 6%, the world is over. So I, I just try and, and put it into perspective. I never talk about rate. I talk about payment and affordability, yeah. right? And I know you do the same. So it's like, you know, Hey, Mr. Customer, what is your payment that you want to make monthly? Okay. No more than $5,000. Let me work backwards to the sales price based on the rate. And even if the rate's 30%, you're still affording the payment that you want. Right. Yeah. So, um, so again, it was just an anomaly because of COVID. I mean, they are projecting for rates to still increase. Um, I just want to show you, a. this is really crazy to me when, when we looked at this, but um, we got this, the source is Freddie Mac, right? So it's, it's real yeah. information. So as of January 6th, um, the average interest rate was at 3.22% on a 30 year fixed. Uh, that would give you a monthly payment. We, we used $4,000 across the board of principal and interest. Okay. Okay. So you not including taxes or an insurance. So a $4,000 payment would get someone a house at $922,000. And yeah. you can see as it, I mean, look how, how rates changed just in the month of January, right? Every time I woke up, I was like, had a small heart attack. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're seeing, you're going, you're going April. So in April, it went to a little like 5.1%. It dropped almost $200,000 in buying power for the same yeah. payment. And now you look as of today, one month later, we're up another half a percent, right? And everybody's heard like the Fed raised rates. So, so now you're at about 66 with a principal and interest payment of 4,000. Yeah. Right. And you have to add. And how to would you, and so 686, we're right on the cusp there of the loan limits, like here where I am in Riverside County. Yeah. Um, that's with a 5% down payment. Yep. Now, obviously with more down, you have a little bit more purchasing power and, and so on. Absolutely. I mean, there's, and that's the other thing we're going to talk about is, is the really good thing and, and why it's so, you know, the market, the bubble's not bursting is because they're coming out with new products, right? Yeah. So, so they're, so adjustable rate mortgages now are going to be a little bit more prevalent than they were. And, and an arm loan, if it's your, in the right situation is still a decent loan. Um, you know, if, if you look at the history of people and how 
how they turn their mortgages over, right? Two years, three years, five years. If you can get something fixed for seven years or 10 years at a better interest rate, you're, you're going to still have that security, but be able to lock in at a lower rate and, and at any point in time can refinance, right? So if rates drop, you can refi. Yeah. So for um, some of our audience members that might not know what that is, what an arm loan is, can you just elaborate, like go to like a loan for yeah. one a little bit and explain yeah. that yeah. is a 30 year fixed? Yeah. So an arm stands for adjustable rate mortgage. And mm-hmm. there's different terms. It could be um, a five, one arm means uh, that it's fixed for the first five years that you have the loan. And then after five years is up, you could either have it adjust depending on the, the loan you lock in on, you could have it adjust um, every six months or every one year. Okay. okay. Um, at every adjustment, there will be a certain percentage maximum that it can adjust. And then there will also be a lifetime cap over the life of the loan. So, um, so you can choose to have a five-year fixed loan, a seven-year fixed loan, or a 10-year fixed loan, okay. depending on what your goal is for the home. Um, so a five-year will, because it's a shorter term, will always have a little bit better pricing. Um, but, but right now, we're looking at ARM loans and fixed loans and showing both to the customer so they can just make an educated decision on what works best for them. Because sometimes the rate could be you know, a half a percent less, um, or we could fit them into a jumbo arm program, um, even though their loan amount isn't jumbo, right? So there's Mm -hmm. so many variations that we just see, like, what is the best product for, for what they qualify for? And obviously you talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both case by case. We have to, I mean, we have to educate them, you know, Hey, if it adjusts every year, this is what the adjustment could be. Um, you know, after your seven years, if you don't refinance, um, there are no prepayment penalties on, they're called agency loans, right? Which are your traditional uh, mortgage loans. So, you know, so in four years from now, if rates get back to where they were, you could refi out of it. Um, now after seven years, you know, you just want to make sure your credit's still in good standing, right? You still have the ability to refi, but that's really what a good loan officer will do is, is educate and just make sure people, you know, know what their options are and what's right for them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those, are, those are coming back for sure. Um, okay. While we're talking about rates, I think I'm going to get into some programs, but um, I know that we talked about something that you're kind of hearing around town um, about this, this special like loan or special product. Do you, do you want to uh, yeah, ask me so about this, it? This California HFA, yeah. uh, the 10% down payment assistance, if you will, but the forgiven 10%. Um, so that's kind of a new thing that, um, everybody's talking about. Obviously I know that it only applies to a very small handful of home buyers out there or prospective home buyers. Um, but since you are, you know, the money, the money guy, (laughs) the money girl, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? And let's just bring that to perspective for some people. Yeah. So the, the, so it's a completely different type of product. Um, so you could either do it as an FHA or a conventional loan. And basically we do the first mortgage, right? And what's happening is you're getting the assistance in the form of, you know, like a grant or a second mortgage of money that you don't have to pay back as long as you stay in the house for five years. Okay. So if, you, um, if you sell the house in two years, you're going to pay um, two years worth of, we're well, going to pay three years worth of that money back, right? 20, okay. basically you're going to pay 60% of whatever you borrowed because you're supposed to have 20% per year. Per um, year. Okay. Yeah. So FICO scores on FHA is at about a 640 FICO conventional is a 680. Um, the thing that we have to be really careful of is every single County has a different loan limit. So yeah. we have to look up um, what County they're buying in, um, what the maximum um, loan limit is, and then the maximum income limit that's set. And you have to be under a certain um, percentage of the average median income of that county. So it's it's a lot. I mean, when I talk to someone that's asking about that, it's like we dig in, we go through all their stuff up front, and we make sure that they'll really qualify. There also um, is usually a cost to the program. So you're not getting the full 10%. Um, so there's some caveats to it, but we have yeah. it. We have yeah. it. If someone asks you about it, make sure you let them know that it's a program that we can offer. But I feel like you have your your buyers here, right? 
and you have all of these qualifications. And then if someone says, well, I want the down payment assistance, really it shrinks because of all the little qualifications that are needed for that. And then it also really shrinks your purchasing power too. There's so many homes that you'd be able to qualify for. Sorry for all that. No, that's okay. Yeah. Because like on a traditional mortgage and, and honestly, I think the rate we looked up, um, yeah. So I think we were at like 5.75 the other day on that product where that's about where traditional mortgages are right now. Um, the assistance is great, of course, but yeah, you have to not only qualify with income, but with debt ratio and then finding a house in that price point. Um, unfortunately, sometimes in our markets, you know, in your County and, and in San Diego or Riverside County, Corona, it's just tough just because of, of the price points right now, but, but we have it. We'll always look for it for someone if they qualify. Um, I wanted to talk to you too, about a couple of other really cool new products um, that have come out recently. So have you ever heard of a bank statement loan? Yes, I have. Okay. So usually it's, you need 12 months of bank statements or 24 months. So we have an investor that will allow only three months of bank statements Um, They'll use it either your personal or your business. And then the cool thing is they allow uh, transfers even to be used as qualifying income. So transfers in or deposits. Um, The the big thing about this is getting the three months of statements up front. Uh, They'll cash flow the monthly income so that we know what we're working with, with the full application. But if you look, you can go up to $3 million loan amounts Okay. Um, a 75% max loan to value. So you do have to have some money in the bank, obviously to put down, um, you can do owner occupied and you only need a 675 FICO. And this is and bank statement loans are meant for self-employment only, right? They are. Okay. Yeah. So, the, so it's, it's known that people that are self-employed generally with their tax returns have their gross income and their expenses and then their net income. Right. Yeah. And usually, well, all the time as a lender, we have to use their net and, um, and so we know that they make the money, right? It's just that they have certain expenses that they write off. So this is great for someone. Now, this is called a non-QM loan or non-qualified mortgage. So yeah. on these products I'm going to talk about, you're going to look at higher than market rates, right? But they're for people that wouldn't get a loan otherwise. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, until the self-employed person maybe gets their taxes in order or um, maybe they run a cash business, I don't know. Um, but, yeah. but this is out there for people. That's great. So that's pretty cool. This one I love too. Um, there's a lot more people, especially in our areas that are looking uh, to become investors. So they're looking to buy non-owner occupied properties, right? That are either like short-term rentals. Um, it could be a single family residence or a two to four unit. And this is no income, no job verification. Okay. What they do is they qualify off of what's called the DSCR. It's called the debt service coverage ratio. So what they'll do is they'll, we'll do an appraisal and we'll get a rent schedule and we'll use the projected rents. And that has to be equal to or greater than what the new mortgage payment's going to be. Okay. Okay. So, so when you sit down with an investor, you know, you're going to want to make sure the property makes sense anyway for them to buy financially. Um, So this is a great product that goes up to $2 million. Um, You know, you're, you're going to have, I think it's about um, 20% down. I remember correctly. And then if you don't have the debt service ratio um, at a hundred percent, your, your loan to value goes down a little bit. So you can go from like 80 to 75. So again, investors usually have some cash, um, but it's like not documenting income or jobs or anything. You're just using the rent schedule. Okay. This is pretty cool. Um, The third product that I was so excited about is it's ATR ability to repay. Okay. So we qualify someone with enough liquid assets to cover the loan balance. So you literally can get a million dollar loan. If you could document a million dollars in assets, they don't have to be employed. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's people maybe had have a ton of money lost their job because of COVID. Um, it's, you know, it's owner occupied only. You have to have a decent amount to put down, but we can go all the way down to a 600 credit score. Um, and you only have to show two months of statements for the account, the asset account. So um, assets are like checking, savings, IRAs. Um, if you go into like a 401k, they'll take a percentage of that, depending on your age. If you're mm-hmm. a retirement age or not, they'll usually take like 50 or 60% of your vested balance. Um, but, but there's a lot of people that have 
investments and, and money to document assets, but can't qualify with income. So this I yeah. thought was cool too, because it's someone that like, you know, has like saved and invested, but just for whatever reason, um, they're either not working or they just can't prove their income. So, yeah, so this was pretty cool. That's, that is pretty cool. I might have a, a perspective client for That's this awesome. program. <laughs> so, yeah. So there are, there are new things coming out all the time. And um, so I, I, I'm glad we had this call because I think, you know, this is something we're going to do weekly, right? I think. I weekly, think yeah. So yeah. for, you know, our whole audience, we're going to just jump on weekly, do a short call like this yeah. and just kind of talk about the market, talk about mortgages, talk about, you know, any tools that we have um, in our tool belt to kind of help the general public when it comes to anything real estate. Yeah. Um, I know on our docket for next week, we're going to talk about HomeBot. HomeBot. Woo! Amazing, amazing tool. So stay tuned for next week. And then, you know, really my goal, Tracy, is to um, answer our audience's questions. So yeah. as we start doing these videos more, really just to educate um, everybody who's out there looking, interested, just curious yeah. about the real estate market, you, um, you all can pop by with DMs of questions and yeah. that way Tracy and I can, to, can address those week to week. Yeah. And then for you, like, how do you, cause I know you're everywhere and you're all over and you're dropping off, you know, what's the value of your home and, and yes. everything in that market, but like, how do you suggest that people get in touch with you best? So uh, definitely they can reach out to me via email, text, or call. Okay. Um, and, you know, we have our, our phone numbers listed. Same with you, Tracy. Or they can go to my website, okay. um, which is heatherjoneshomes.com. Okay. They, they can contact me there. Oh, that's a good ring to it. Heather yeah. Heatherjoneshomes.com. See? <laughs> awesome. I, and Heather's so great. I mean, if you haven't worked with her, her energy is amazing. You go to bat for your clients. Well, you're knowledgeable. You. Um, your marketing is on point. So I'm so glad that we um, we've connected and um, and that we're kind of partnering together a little bit and, and doing this stuff. Homebot is so amazing. So yeah. watch next week. It's a great free tool for home buyers and home sellers. Um, yeah. we'll do a little demo on it and show you around, and um, you can you can easily sign up for it and message us if you have any questions in the meantime. So. Yeah. And definitely, I know Tracy, you come with years and years of knowledge and ex experience and expertise. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for your friendship and um, partnership. And uh, to be honest, I love what I do. I love helping my clients and families and investors and home sellers, home buyers, whatever it is. I, I just really enjoy what I do. So oh. I I'm grateful for this. <laughs> and your kids didn't come in as we were recording. My kids did not come in. <laughs> okay. yeah. The smack or reward or something. So, well, thank you for listening. Um, you know, it's a, a little bit of a longer video, but we just try to give as much information as possible. And we hope to see you next week. Absolutely. Awesome. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye. Bye.